Welcome to Jalasset Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and Jalasset assets and break it down to bite-sized pieces. Today, concerning news. First up, open interest on BitMEX drops 16% as investors withdraw 37,000 Bitcoin in less than 24 hours. And the whole reason behind this is BitMEX was hit with a charge by the CFTC, which states they did not follow Anti-Money Laundering Act, as well as opening up an illegal exchange. Also, Ripple wins U.S. patent for new Oracle-based smart contract design. And sometimes, one of the talented kid on the block just needs a little bit of time to get going. And lastly, we're gonna take a step back and look at the 20 fastest growing industries for 2020 and beyond. And the reason for that is because these types of industries are going to need a new crypto-based domain. And I can tell you, they're gonna come calling at some point. Looking forward to that, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. Kind of an odd day, especially with what's going on, but it is Friday, October 2nd, around high noon texas time and what do we have well bitcoin is up 0.2 percent and this is amazing because the market the traditional markets have taken a little bit of a tumble uh cryptocurrency market took a little bit of a tumble because of twofold first of all uh bitmax what we just talked about we're gonna get into that real quick and second of all unfortunately president donald trump for the united states has contracted the coronavirus and on twitter i had said hey uh, you know, you should have worn the, your mask more often. And that's just a true statement. You should have worn the mask more often. That's just how it goes. Now, I'm not here saying that I want uh, President Trump to, you know, anything ill to happen to him. Coronavirus is an awful, awful virus. And it took the life of my nephew in Colorado. So all I can say is, you know, Godspeed and hopefully he recovers. But uh, these two pieces of news uh, really were what I thought would actually tumble the market, and it didn't. And I talked about this yesterday. If this was 2017, we would have seen such a massive fall. It would have been not unprecedented, but it would have been one of those days where it's like 20, 30, 40%, who knows? But when we look at what's going on here, this terrible news that's going on, you have to comprehend the maturity of this market. Has anything changed with Bitcoin? Has Bitcoin been hacked? Has any cryptocurrency digital asset just come out and go, you know what, we're just a straight out and right scam and we don't do absolutely anything? No, nothing has changed. It's just we had a exchange that uh, just had an enormous amount of hubris and went around and just said, you know what, we can do whatever we want to. Well, you can't do that. And um, there was a there was a statement. Uh, this is from Ryan over to Alex Masio. He had a really great statement. He said, you know what? He goes, people had talked about how regulators were asleep at the wheel and they don't do anything. Well, guess what? They have been hitting back hard, not only with BitMEX, but also with salt lending. They put a big hurt on them on top of the, the kick ICO. So they're not asleep at the wheel and these types of investigations don't happen overnight. They've been doing this for a long time, methodical laid out plan. So that whole statement actually changed my whole view of uh, US government regulations. So anyhow, let's take a look at how bad the market is. So Ethereum is down 1%. It did dip low 350, but <laughs> not too shabby. Tether's tether. XRP, 23 cents, watch out. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, 2%. Binance Coin, 1.8, up. And then some other different ones here. So let's see how we're doing. 3% for Cardano, almost 5 for Monero. That's weird, Monero. Why would that, uh, there's no reason for that to go down. 4% for Tezos. What are we talking up 1.2? Wrap Bitcoin up 0.3. Wow, wrap Bitcoin, 26. Wow, congratulations. 0.9 for Ave. And then down we go, compound down five, but nothing too fantastic, nothing too uh, like crazy. So I mean, in all honesty, I'll I'll take all these numbers and look, Celsius Network, uh, just hanging above a dollar at 2.1% increase, 26 for the week. So the, all these different things, look, we got a solid market on our hands, boys and girls, and I, for one, am excited. Let's jump in. So first up, interest on Bitmax dropped 16% and people took out their Bitcoin. Not surprising. Let's see what happens. It's not that Bitcoin was actually taken out, but it was actually, it was taken out, but where it was taken out and put into. That's the story. According to Arcane Research's post on Twitter, the former yearly low for the uh, open interest was painted on the 30th of April when the open interest bought it at 61,000 Bitcoin. If you're not familiar with open interest, it's okay. I'm not a big uh, derivatives trader, you know, stuff like that. But open interest is just all the different options or futures that have not been settled. So if you have a high amount, 
And that means that they are unsettled. That means that they're still ongoing. So people, you know, are actually in the game. When the open interest goes low, that means people are closing their positions. Like, I don't want to play the game anymore. And off they go. Anyhow, the post adds that in the wake of the CFTC development where they went in there and they said, hey, BitMEX, you can't do this. We're going to slap you down. We're going to arrest some of the some of the co-owners. The CEO is still at large, but we're going to get them soon. The trader said, hey, I'm going to close my position. And so in April, this is October 1st. So in April, you had it at, at what was considered rock bottom, 62,000. Now look where we're at, 45,000. So uh, ever dwindling open stance. Anyhow, moving on, Coinmetrics data shows that during the same period, a total of 37,000 Bitcoin or almost 400 million was moved out of BitMEX as investors panicking sought to secure their funds. Coinmetric adds that Binance and Gemini captured over a third of the BitMEX withdrawal. So this is interesting because you would think that Coinbase being as big as they are, that they would get the bulk or the lion's share of the outflow of Bitcoin, but that's not the case. And I think people are starting to wise up and go, you know what? Coinbase's fees are just crazy. Customer service is awful. We don't want to go over there and, and all the different shenanigans that are going on with that and all the different things that they're listing. We want to go someplace with a little bit more stability and the fees are not so god awful high. So maybe we're going to take a look at Binance or Gemini or fill in the blank wallet exchange of your choice. I don't know. But uh, that I think is one of the big compelling stories. Then moving down. Uh, there's a quote from uh, Thor Chan as the CEO of Axe Exchange. First of all, let me just tell you, uh, Thor Chan, that's a great name. Thor Chan, what a great name. But he says at a, at a deeper level, we believe it's a sign of the maturing market, exactly what I was talking about before. Thor says, whatever is unfolding over at BitMEX is something all exchanges should pay close attention to and learn from. Absolutely. First of all, really what you have to look, take a look at is are centralized exchanges really needed anymore? Are they something that's good? I mean, it's a question I need to ask. My answer is we do need centralized exchanges because the people, the masses, the, the vast majority who are out there have no idea what's going on behind the scenes. They have no idea what's happening and the revolution that's really going on. So they're going to need a place like a Coinbase, a place like a Gemini, a place like a Binance, because that's what they're used to. They're not used to Uniswap. Are you out of your mind? I mean, that's just like next level stuff. I mean, for us, it's kind of like, you know, normal normal stance but for them it's like what are you talking about so yes we're gonna need centralized exchanges but moving forward are we really gonna need them no we're not but decentralized exchanges are on the rise and i think they're actually good for what's about to happen but there's another thing and that is that the exchanges that actually work with the regulators are not going to get slapped down i mean look what happened with gemini and zcash they went to the regulators and go hey we want to be able to give our customers the ability to use shielded or private transaction with zcash and they took them a long time it didn't just happen overnight and they said okay and they approved it and as of two days ago you can use totally shielded and private transactions out of gemini using zcash see how that works it just takes a little bit of time. Adults in the room, that's usually how it works. It's finishing up, meanwhile, the BitMEX executives who also face a violation of the Bank Secrecy Act deny the charges against them. Of course. I mean, what, what are they going to say? Yeah, we're guilty. <laughs> Come on. Sorry, that was, that was pretty funny. But, I mean, the whole thing is this. Um, they made uh, over, I think, around a trillion dollars. And I think uh, Hayes, the CEO, I mean, he made hundreds of, maybe hundreds of million dollars, maybe 300 million. I can't remember what the, the total was. But the fine was 250000 and maybe five years in jail. So I'm going to ask you a question. If you could take, I don't know, $100 million and someone says you got to spend two years in jail because you're not going to spend five years in jail because you're rich and you got good lawyers and they'll probably get you down to like a reduced sentence. And you also have to pay 250000 Would you do that? Would you do it and move about your day? Or would morals not allow you to do it? That's the big question. Would you do it or would morals get in the way? Let me know in the comment section. Let's move on.